what I would like to do, let's go ahead and, um, what I would like to do this next part is um, do so, a little bit of evaluation. It's always good to see where we are so that we can have a baseline from which to start. And do not do anything on this page just yet. We're going to go through each one of these um, one at a time. So just stick your name on it and then um, don't, don't do anything more. Okay, so stick your name on those. And then here's what I would like to do. Um, let's see. Okay. So first thing, we're going to do some evaluations here so, so that you can kind of mm, – Maybe some of the things that we'll evaluate, you may not have thought, oh, well, that has to do with stress. And we'll explain Thursday how. But um, to start, we'll kind of get some idea. So um, what I'd like you to do for this first one is we call this the stressometer score. And here's how I'd like you to put the, the number on here. If you were thinking about um, maybe not the last month of your life, because maybe summer's a little bit atypical, but if you were thinking about a typical month in your life um, and you were to give yourself a number, let's say if you were to say one, you would be, if you were to put down the number one, you would have during that entire time, you know, pure bliss, um, many periods of ecstasy, you know, happiness. Um, certainly no stress at all. Um, what? <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> Drug free, by the way. <laughs> Drug free. So that's one, one side of the scale. On the other side, so, and this probably you might have some drugs going, but, um, <laughs> you know, suicidal, um, high levels of anxiety, um, perhaps clinically depressed, um, stress levels through the roof, you know, just un unbearable stress. Nothing to do with the symptoms yet, but just your general state. Now, I know we kind of Life's a roller coaster, and uh, some days they're up and some days we're down. But if you were to put a number on, um, or an average, you know, adding up all the days, dividing by the number of days, what number would you put in there? Okay? And just put one in there. Just whatever that is. All right. Now, once you've done that, put your pen down. And here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to find your pulse, um, either right here or right here. Somebody once told me, this is more accurate than this. You who are in the medical field might understand why. I mean, it didn't make any sense to me why this would be more accurate. But anyway, find your pulse, and what I'm going to have you do is um, count your heartbeats. So you all should have one. Um, Yeah, it is. For most people, this is an easier find. You got it? Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do is just count the number of beats. Just count when I say begin, start counting, and then when I say begin, you know, 
is true. So, uh, ready? Get your heart rate. Begin. Stop. Now, in your head, double that number. So if you counted 35, then write down the number 70 in on that second line. So just double the number you counted, put it on the line. OK, now put your pen back down, pencil. Now, what I'd like you to do right now is I want you to sit so your um, rear end is back in the back of your seat, so you're sitting straight up and down. I know it's not a very comfortable way to sit. Now, I'd like you to put one hand right here, just above your heart's right here. I want you to put your hand right here, and your other hand right over your belt, so your palm's right over your belly button. Okay? One there. Now, what I'd like you to do, don't change a thing. Don't modify this at all. But I want you to tell, just figure out, when you inhale and exhale normally, not, you know, I'm going to breathe superiorly right now. <laughs> breathe absolutely normally and figure out when you inhale and then exhale which hand moves the most. So when you inhale, does your chest like this seem to move more? It doesn't mean you're better or worse if, you, if one does or the other. But does your stomach move more so it goes like, I'm exaggerating this, but your stomach would move in and out. Your ab work for the day. And for some of you, it might be both, where your stomach and your chest all both move at the same time, breathing normally. So just write down stomach, chest, or both when you figure that out. OK, now this next one, yeah, you think we this is just the beginning of strange, trust me. <laughs> um, you're going to go home and they'll say, you did what? We breathed in class today. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun class. So, um, so what I want you to do, stay sitting like you are. So rather than you know, the comfortable way, sit in the you know, butt back, back. Now I want you to, what I'm going to have you do is count the number of normal breaths. So just you can close your eyes or not, but just count the number of normal breaths you breathe in a minute. And so when I say begin, just one inhale, an inhale and exhale is one. So that would be one. But breathe absolutely normally, even though when you put your awareness on it, it changes. But that's okay. Try to breathe as normally as possible. Okay, so ready and begin. Stop. I mean, keep breathing, but <laughs> stop counting. And double that number. So if you counted 10, write 20. So whatever that is. OK, now in the next one, I'd like you, for number five, to just write down what you currently perceive to be your major sources of stress. If you look out in the world and ask, and live through your typical days and you find yourself stressed in situations, what are those situations? And you don't have to, don't just say like school, you know, there's nothing stressful about the buildings. What is it in the school? And you don't have to take too long and be too descriptive, but just say, you know, having 18 hours and working full time and being a single mom or something. Is that close? Um, 
Was that, was that close? <laughs>